Craziest rumor you heard about yourself? Craziest rumor is that I'm with my boyfriend and he is my sugar daddy. False. False. And is this something that you've addressed publicly or is this the first time? Um, this is the first time. How did that rumor start? Because my boyfriend is 12 years older than me and everybody feels like when you're dating somebody older than you you're, and you're younger than them, that you're with them because their money or they're taking care of you. Um, if he's way older than you, there is giving sugar daddy vibes. So, yeah. And care to share who you're referring to as your boyfriend? Boosie badass. Now, what is your opinion on that age range? I love it. Mm. I like an older guy because, you know, you can learn a lot from them and they can teach you a lot of things. Uh, I don't like to be with people that are um, very much more immature than me because that's not going to work out. Mm. Is this the largest gap you've ever been in a relationship with? Yes. And was that something you were open to or always open-minded about or this relationship presented that? Um, it just happened. It just happened. And I wind up loving everything about it. Um, this wasn't nothing that I was ever like, oh, maybe I should date somebody older than me. It just kind of just happened. And I went with the flow and I love it. And speaking of the flow, how did it even initiate? How did it happen? Yes. Mm. Well, I was, a, first of all, I was working at uh, IHOP on Canal Street. And I was walking down the street to go get some change for the store. And I see this guy pull up in his Rolls Royce and he's like, hey, hey, come here, come here. Let me holler at you, let me holler at you. And I look, I was like, mm. he had all his friends and stuff. And I was like, mm. so I kind of felt the pressure. So I gave him my number, but it took us a while to start dating because I was still kind of young and I was just like, mm, I don't really know. You were aware of who he was. Yes. Were you aware of his age at the time? Mm -mm. <laughs> and then when you finally figure out his age, what did you think? When I first figured out his age, I was like, you know, I don't, I don't really know. He had to give me some time, to be honest with you, because I met him when I was 18. And I didn't really start like having full blown conversations with him until I was 21. So at that time I was cool with it. Like I was like, mm, let me just give it a try. Was that something that was talked about, the age gap? No, we didn't care. And as far as titles, you use the phrase boyfriend. That's mm -hmm. as far as it's gotten? Yeah. No engagement. No engagement. No marriage. No marriage. But has either of that been talked about? Um, no. We don't talk about it. Now, what attracted you to him? What attracted me to him? So, first of all, his heart. He was always just so genuine and so nice. Um, such a given person, but I just, I mostly got attracted to his heart because I knew that he was a good person. You now you can kind of sense that about somebody, like just from the way that they treat all the people around them and just from his actions and the things that he do, I just knew that he have, he has a genuine heart. Who said I love you first? Who? It was kind of mutual. I don't know. We've been saying I love you for a long time. So I'm going to just say we both said it at the same time because the feelings was the same way. Do you remember how long the relationship was before either of you two said it? Because um, we was talking for a minute. So it took from like maybe like at 24. Mm -hmm. 24, that's when we said I love you. Now, when it comes to the acting side of things, mm -hmm. for those in the audience getting to know you for the very first time, mm -hmm. how did that start and give a synopsis of the acting path for you? Um. When I was younger, I always used to watch TV so much. I used to feel like I always wanted to be a superstar. And um, my mom first put me in acting school when I was 13 years old. And um, I started going to NOCA, and it's a performing arts school. And um, 
I enjoyed it, but I knew that I wanted to be in not theatrical acting. I wanted to really be like on the TV. Like I wanted to do that type of acting. So then I joined um, Jacqueline Fleming Acting Studio. And from there I wound up taking classes. I wound up getting an agent and the rest is just history. I've been doing it ever since. But your first leading role was in one of Boosie's movies. Yes which was My Struggle, mm -hmm. a biopic on his life. Yeah. Now, how did that opportunity happen? I don't know, it just, he just was like, I want you to be in my movie, my biopic. Um, and particularly, I was one of his love interests. That's so crazy, because in real life and in the movie, I was one of his love interests. Um, not the character, the character is one of his love interests. But uh, I played that character and he just told me, he was like, I want you to do this part with me, for me. And I was like, okay, what is it? And he was like, I need you to play Nita. And I was like, okay, let's do it. I enjoyed it. Now, because you were in a relationship with him at that time, mm -hmm. was he harder on you on the acting side of things or easier on you on the acting side of things? No, it was easy because it flowed naturally. Like I knew what to do. So it wasn't really anything that he had to tell me to do, like to correct. And then what about Where is MJ? Mm -hmm. You have a role in that as well. Yes. And again, how did that opportunity happen? Same thing. He said, Bay, I want you to be in this movie with me. And I was like, okay. He was like, what is the movie? He's like, where is MJ? And I was like, okay, let's do it. Um, I was excited. Anything that he put me in or anything that he asks me to do, I'm excited to do for him. And what did you think of the final outcome of both pictures? I think they were both awesome. Like, just to see him write, create, and direct both of his films, that's amazing to me. Like, for somebody to even do that, like, I, I don't know. He inspired me. What did you think of his acting skills? He did good. Now, I, nah, I know he could be a clown, but I think acting-wise, he does a really good job. And because, and we're taking it back to the uh, biopic role, mm -hmm. um, because you played his, because you played, you played his love interest, but you were his love interest in real life mm -hmm. simultaneously, is that considered acting then? Or were you acting because it's real life as well. Um, I still consider it acting because I had lines. So this wasn't anything that I was saying in real life. This was lines that were said by her and, you know, so I still consider it acting. And how much, and speaking of that, how much was ad-libbing for you in either roles versus mm -hmm. sticking to the script? Um, I didn't really ad-lib because I, I, like I told you, I've been doing this for since I was 15, so anything, any lines that I get, I don't have to ad lib, like I can really just go off of the paper. Just curious there. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else in regards to either of these movies or a question you weren't asked, people wanna know about any of this stuff? Um, uh, people always ask me <laughs> were me and Boo really having sex in a Boosie film, Boosie biopic, and of course, no. We weren't. It's called acting. That's about it. And aside from acting, has music ever been talked about? No. <laughs> What's your perspective on music? I love music. I love to hear him rap. I love to hear other people rap, saying all that, but it's not for me. Never been for you, or you attempted at one point in your life? It has never been for me. Has he asked you? He better not ask me that. He hears how I sing in the shower. He better not ever ask me that. Singing and rapping are two different things. Rapping? I, you know what? I rap when I'm drunk with my friends, like in a car, like that. I say, come on, do a beat. Oh, we could do the Shabuya. Sha, sha, Shabuya, roll call. But other than that, don't ask me to do none of that stuff. And speaking of music, has any of his songs that he's put out publicly thus mm -hmm. far been about you? Yeah. Care to share which songs? Nope. And the songs that have been about you, mm -hmm. you know they're about you? It's inferred it's about you? He um, said he wrote it about you or, or what? 
He's wrote it about me, he tells me. Some of the songs that he's done about me, he tells me. And then some of the songs, I could be like, are you talking about me? He'll tell me. Which, okay, so is this something that you find out after the fact? Like he records and cuts it and you find out it's about you or he says he's gonna do something about you before he goes in? No, he'll just do it. And then I'll listen to him like, you talking about me? Anything that uh, you didn't dis anything that you didn't approve of that he's mentioned about you in music. Um, no. Mm -mm. What's that? What's your reaction when you do hear lyrics about you and you know it's in fact about you? <laughs> I smile. I blush because I think it's so cute. It's so sweet. Okay, and back to the subject of rumors. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is your policy when it comes to rumors? There are some people that clear them up, mm -hmm. address them, and there's some that sweep them under the rug and let people talk. Mm -hmm. How do you operate? I let people say what they're gonna say. Cause they're gonna say something, whether if you're doing good or if you're doing bad. Like it's, I, it's too many people in the world for me to go tit for tat with telling them, this is not true, this is not true. That's not me, that's not me. Mm -mm. Just let somebody else do it. Before this interview ends, is there anything else you were not asked, fans want to know, people want to know? Is there anything you want to address while you're here? Anything else you didn't get a chance to mention, you'd like to mention now? Um, one thing, people are always asking me why am I not so open about my relationship. They're always asking me if I'm in a relationship because I never post a lot. Um, and I feel like uh, when it comes down to my relationship and something that I care a lot about and stuff that I'm, something that I'm really into, like I feel like I like to keep a lot of that stuff to myself. I'm getting better with being more open, but it's a lot of things that I, like when I, when I love somebody and I cherish somebody, I cherish our moments and our moments are our moments. It's not our moments and their moments. So it's, it's hard for me to be like, you know, people always wanna see, see, see this and see this. And I'm like, it's hard for me to pull out a phone and be like, oh my God, he did this for me, he did that for me. This is what's going on in this moment because I'm living in the moment with the person that I love. So it's hard for me to, I want people to know that it's hard for me to do that. I'm getting better at showing some things, but a lot of things, they're very sentimental to me. They're memories, they're of mine, you know, and I cherish them and I keep them to myself and I'm getting better with showing some stuff, but it won't always be everything. Like, I'm just not one of those girls that put all my business out in the open. Like, I, I've just, I've never been that girl. Anything else? No, I think that's it.